Hi, I'm going to talk about um, surgery procedures for IIH. The main one I want to talk about is shunting. Um, a shunt, um, there's about eight types of shunts, um, but there are quite a few manufacturers. There's, um, I've managed to find five manufacturers. Uh, there probably is more. Um, some of the popular shunts are the Strata, the Delta, an LP shunt, which is normally just a catheter tubing, uh, so it doesn't have any valves in it. Uh, the Sophia Duro, um, the Polos, uh, and the Codman Centran, Centra, and the Codman Hakkinen. They're just some of the names, and I, I do hear these kind of names pop up. It is always worth working out what type of shunt you're having, because shunt, some shunts are better than others for different conditions. Um, if you, um, like I know that um, one of the, the Delta has a lot more settings, so you've got more range. Um, the Strata, um, that's the one I've got. It's only got five settings, but it seems to have been very effective. Not had any problems with it. All I've had to do is change the settings. Um, so it's, it's, it's good. Um, there's about nine. There's there's nine minimum reasons why you need a shunt. Um, and I need my glasses, so I can't read. Um, some of the most popular reasons for needing a shunt is having hydrocephalus or hydrocephalus, um, and a brain tumor, spina bifida, um, Sandy Warhol syndrome, and of course what most of the people watching this, idiopathic intracranial hypertension. Now, a shunt, what is a shunt? Very good question. It's a catheter tube, basically, from your brain to a different location. Unless it's an LP shunt, then it's from your spine to your stomach. Now, you will hear a BP, BA, BPL, BC. You've got ones that go from your brain to your stomach, your brain to your heart, your brain to your lungs, literally they can put it anywhere. Um, and the reason why they would put it in different locations is because sometimes if you put it into your stomach, it causes a lot of problems, um, like problems with like IBS and, and, and that sort of symptoms of like IBS. Because um, obviously it's having to, it actually goes like in a cavity, it doesn't actually go into your stomach or into anywhere it just goes into the lining uh, so sometimes they can you can end up with like a pocket of fluid um, because the body still doesn't absorb it from there um, so that's where they put shunts you know why that's to take the pressure off the brain and most of all to take the pressure off the eyes or constant pressure off the backs of the eyes um, it's very good for papilledema I can only say that because mine has um, clear. My, my papilledema is completely gone. Uh, it was gone after I think about six months of having my shunt and it was just completely gone. Um, I, oh, my brain's gone. Um, shunts were first brought in um, for hydrocephalus. It was a father um, designed it. Um, I think it was in the 1950s. I've lost a year. Um, it was in the 50s to help um, take away the pressure from a skin's brain. Um, they then have spent the last 60 odd years um, refining this. Um, one of the biggest companies, Johnson & Johnson, actually uh, have a, a, a subsidiary company that do the shunts, that's the Codman, um, which is a, a massive name. Um, it's a lot of money. Like I said, there's eight different types where they either have a tube that comes out of the side of the skull and then into the actual um, shunt part or the valve and then goes down. Or you can have ones that have a reservoir, sort of, they go into the top here and you have a reservoir that sits here, then it comes down and then behind the ear you've got the actual valve. Um, like, like I said, there's, ver there's a couple of different types. Um, all the information is down here. I have done so much research for you guys and found so much link, so many links. Um, one day I think I'm going to write a book <laughs> just so that you get a book 
little handy leaflet. There's also a lot of information down there about um, hydrocephalus. Now, a lot of it you'll think, oh, it doesn't apply to me, it's hydrocephalus. There is actually, um, in my mind, a little debate going on whether IIH is similar to acquired hydrocephalus. There is a couple of times where I've been in hospital and instead of saying it's IIH, they have said I had acquired hydrocephalus, um, which is, is very confusing. Um, but when you look at it, if you have a brain tumour um, you and your pressure goes up, it's classed as acquired hydrocephalus. It's not class, or it's classed as secondary IH. Very confusing, it's just a name. The important thing to focus on is what they're saying about the shunt. So don't be put off as it says hydrocephalus. Right, let's talk about some other surgeries. Um, other surgery options that are open to you is stenting. Now this is venous sinus stenting. I watched um, a, a small clip it of them doing it and it's just like a little spring that they put in your, your vein and just goes boing. Um, very strange. They've used stents for a while, not with IIH, but they have used it in um, patients that have um, the, they've smoked so their arteries have collapsed. In fact, my mum actually had stents in her legs or in her, her groin area to um, open up the veins so that she had better circulation to her feet. So they are quite well used. There's, I've put, for once I've put, um, in, instead of in the other bits, I haven't put statistics really, but in this I have because stenting is very, very modern and it seems to be very much used in America. Uh, there was uh, someone analysed 19 studies, which is a total of 207 cases, um, and there was 87% improvement. Um, it doesn't say how great the improvement is, it just says it's in, they improved. Uh, in the studies that I've read, it's a bit hit and miss, but then you could say the same thing about shunting. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is optical nerve sheath decompression and fenestration. Now, there's actually a video, and oh my god, I could I, I watched it, but I was like, um, they may see make an incision in top of your eyelid. Oh, no, couldn't handle that. Um, Again, this seems to be used quite a lot in America. If you're not suffering headaches, but you are suffering from uh, papilledema, this seems like a good option for you. Um, and obviously, I think it's a lower risk because they're not going into your brain cavity and X, Y, and Z. The last one, which seems to have gone out of fashion now, is subtemporal decompression which is where they take a 50p piece size out of your brain. Uh, sorry, not out of your brain, out of your skull. Be worried if you took it out of your brain. Now, taking parts of the skull away is not a new thing. It's very much used, um, especially in things like car accidents, horse riding accidents, where they've had a very bad brain trauma. Uh, and sometimes the brain uh, swells, so the... The skull, it, it, it's just going to get crushed. Now, if you were left with that sort of injury and that sort of pressure because your brain has swollen, you, you would you would die. You'd probably have a stroke and die. But because they take away your skull, um, the reason I keep just going forehead like this is because I know of someone who had a horse riding accident, and um, unfortunately she was that ill. They had to take the whole of the front of her skull off um, so that it gave her brain. Uh, chance to breathe, and they end up they're gonna end up putting titanium plates um, to give her a skull again. Um, so th there are a lot of options. I've also put links in the bottom for things like I have IIH um, and IIH UK. Now I'm not um, I'm not overly wise on the whole community thing. Um, sometimes the whole community thing's great, but sometimes it isn't. 
I think it's an individual choice whether you have a shunt or whatever surgery. It's your choice. Don't let the community choose for you because you do find that when someone gets a shunt and they get better, they seem to disappear. And it's not because they're dead. It is because they are well and they've got more time on they've, they've got time on their hands. They can go out. They go back to work. They, they have kids to look after. They have a good life. I um, was in the library a couple of years ago and I've just had my shunt. Someone had asked me what the wound on my head was. I uh, told them and the librarian actually turned around and went, oh, that's funny. I had a shunt. And it was actually a lumbar shunt. So it was it was definitely that she had IIH. She, she said it was a, a quite hydrocephalus. But it, it was probably definitely IIH because lumbar shunts are, tend to be used for IIH mainly. And she's had a baby, she's worked, just it's not let her stop her. And that's the thing, when people get good surgery and a good surgeon, they do. They go off and they get a life. Now you're going to ask, why am I still here? Plain and simple reason is I have fibromyalgia um, and I have other health conditions that is stopping me from going out there and getting a life. And the other thing is I care and no one was there for me. Um, so I want to be there for you. It, it It's a hard process. And when you think you're on your own, which I did, I thought I was on my own. It does. It, it causes mental anguish but you're not on your own and educate yourself inform yourself go to the, some of the links in the box below and make your choice for you because it is a very personal choice it, it's like what underwear you're going to wear and not everybody's underwear suits another person so definitely you choose for you don't let anyone else push you into anything or pull you out of anything. Um, I love my shunt. Uh, when I met my surgeon, I was very happy with what he said. Uh, it turns out he's one of the best spinal surgery surgeons as well in, in like this area. So I was over the moon. I am a lucky one. I know this. My eyes are in remission. Um, it's just my other health conditions I've got to work out. Um, untreated, yes, this is a dangerous disease, but if you get the treatment and you inform yourself and you read up, you'll be fine, be absolutely fine, and I know some girls that have done it by diet and drugs only, and they've got back into life, so there is hope. Um, I do believe that the weight loss part of IIH might not be as true as they say, um, but I think it's more down to what you eat, not so much how much weight you lose. So that's pretty much everything I need to cover. I'm going to make another three videos, and they're going to be on three different subjects, um, and I hope that you will keep following me and keep being excited by everything I do um, because that that's the main thing I want to keep people positive um, and knowing that it's okay and it's okay not to be okay as well there is many times and you can see on my videos the, the times I mean three four months ago I was not a happy bunny but now I'm on the right drugs I'm I'm doing okay I have a lot of other issues, and they are issues. So I hope this has helped. And just to finish, I want to show you my nails. And they actually say IIH, because it is IIH Awareness Month. So make yourself aware of IIH.